Hi, David from Electric Teaching here. Uh, going with part two of uh, Midpoint Rule and Simpsons Rule, and also doing programming with our TI after we uh, do this by hand. Uh, we've already showed the Midpoint Rule for the approximate area um, underneath the curve, square root of sine of x. The Midpoint Rule uses the heights of four rectangles here. I'm going to use the Simpsons Rule now to try to give an explanation of why that rule is uh, sometimes a better approximation. I was able to explain clearly how we're plugging in the heights of the based on the midpoint of each interval. We had four intervals here for the midpoint. We want to do four intervals here also for the Simpsons, but to give another explanation, give a slightly better explanation, hopefully a slightly uh, a, a thorough explanation of why this rule came about, I'm going to break this up into eight, eight different intervals. And in these eight intervals, we're going to use the idea that there's a parabola that fits between any two intervals, between any two intervals. That we're gonna, that there's some parabola that we're going to use to estimate the area, to estimate the area underneath this curve. So first of all, you have to have an even number of intervals. And that's based on the fact that the way we're doing this is pretending that the function, the red f function, is really these green parabola functions. And we're really going to pretend that these are the functions we're plugging in, which created this formula. Now this formula was proven using a quadratic uh, using the idea of, of placing a quadratic between these two points, this point and this point, and then assuming that the areas would be very similar underneath as any given function, they then would use the those areas and created this formula. Now that is a terrible explanation if you want to really know why the formula works. I just want to give you an idea of where it came from. That we're really pretending that there's parabolas between any two points, thus the even number of intervals needed, otherwise this won't work. And that if you do that, if you pretend that these are actually a quadratic situation between any two points, you can get this formula, which then becomes then an estimate, another, an additional estimate with our left end, right end, midpoint, trapezoid approximations. Okay, let's get down to the nitty gritty. The formula says to take delta x divided by 3. Okay, that's basically, if you can see that, a delta x, b minus a over n, okay, and that's these d's in here, and divide it by 3. So the, the, the rule then we'll start with is that this integral, this area will equal pi divided by, let's see, it's 4, n is 4, but not times 3, 12, and then we're going to plug and chug, we're going to plug and chug the square root, the square root of sine of, let's see, the first one is a, the first end point is just a, and this is again a formula derived based on the nature of the quadratics between two points here. So I'm just going to put in the sine of 0 here. Plus, plus 4 times the function at a plus d at the first delta. Remember, original deltas are right here. I broke it up into 8 to illustrate the idea. Whoops, didn't win that last one. I broke it up into 8 points, 8 ones to illustrate the idea of parabolas a little bit easier. But we're going to go back to the idea we're just going to use four plug and chugs here. So the first one is right there. That is a plus a delta, a plus a delta. So that is square root of sine of a plus a delta, where our delta is pi over 4 and our a is 0. So this is sine at pi over 4. I'm running out of room here, so I'm going to go plus dot dot dot. We're going to come over here. Oh, I forgot the 4. Almost forgot the 4 multiplier. Hopefully you saw that. I don't want to make that look like it's supposed to be inside um, that uh, uh, square root. So let's slide this over and make sure it looks good here. And so what we want is we want to go ahead and put the 4 in now. The four. It's supposed to be 4 times this using the formula. And it alternates. And the next one's times 2. So now it's times plus a times 2 square root sine of K 
Okay, a plus 2 delta. So we are just incrementing, kind of like left end and right points, left end and right end point approximations. We are just incrementing by a delta over every time. So now I'm at pi over 2. Next one's plus 4 square root, plus 4 square root. Okay, sine of, let's see, 3 pi over 2. That's another quarter pi over. 3 pi oh, over, not over 2, over 4, excuse me, 3 pi over 4, okay? And then the last one, the last one, sorry about that, the last one would be just the function, no multiplier, just the function at the end point. So it's sine of, let's see, uh, pi. Another quarter pi over would be pi. Okay, I kind of squeezed all that in. Let's see if I can clean this up and be a little bit better of a presenter of this information. We got pi over 12 on the outside. I'm going to go ahead and show how much we can plug and chug this stuff. I think it's important to show your teacher that you're going as far as you can by hand before taking out a calculator. I understand we're going to be using a program in a minute here to accelerate that, but that's the idea that if you understand the programming, hopefully you understand everything a little bit better. It's my belief. Uh, let's see, sine of zero, that is the, think of the unit circle, y coordinate at zero, zero. Plus four times sine of pi over four. So sine of pi over four, that's right over there. That's four times the square root of root two over two, which is a kind of a nasty calculation, which we know we will need our calculator for. And next one is two times the sine of pi over two. Sine of pi over two is one. So, so the square root of one is one. So we literally have plus two here. Plus sine of three pi over four. There's three pi over four. That is a positive. That's the height there. So that's a positive root two over two. So that is four times square root of root 2 over 2 and you can see that would make sense there is some symmetry here in the way that should be plugged in this value should be the same as this value and we got last last term here a sine of pi that's way back over here where the height is 0 so again it's a plug and chug of a 0 Again, if you also do these hand calculations you won't feel so ridiculous actually plugging in sine of zero robotically and sine of pi now you can see that you don't need to plug in all those values by hand you only need to plug in these two and add two to it makes it real simple in fact if you look the exact answer then is pi over 12 2 plus 8 of these square root of root 2 over twos hope you can see that root 2 over 2 there. All right, time to get the calculator out, get our answer here for the Simpson approximation. Our answer then is, let's work from the inside out here, we got the square root, the square root of root 2 divided by 2, all right? So we have 8 of those, so 2, excuse me, times 8 of those plus 2, that's then the sum of all those, whoops, got an error there, sorry about that. So let me clear that out. So times, there it is, 8 of those plus 2, there it is. And now we have to multiply by our delta pi over 12, or multiply by our delta. So times pi divided by 12. I don't think I needed the parentheses there, but just to look better. And we get our approximation is 2 point, miss that, 2 point, 28468. 2 point, 2 point, So you can see this is a slightly lower sum than our midpoint one was. Um, but it'd be interesting as we get this program in to take a look what happens and how these two approach each other into the actual true sum as we increase our ends when we look at our programming. So that's what we'll do in part three and part four is we'll program our TI to kick out a bunch of these answers depending on how many ends. And uh, you can use that for exploration or for answering uh, 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 difficult questions at higher ends without uh, maybe using the calculator trick to do that in the first place. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that I have helped.